Guys, awesome. Welcome back. As you can see here, today I'm going to do another PMR446 uh, radio review. And together we're going to look today at the Comvox GT60 walkie-talkies. Those are primarily used in Europe, the PMR446. In the United States, it would be GMRS or FSRS. And as you can see here, they have a yellow color and this green backlight. And there's also like a flashlight function that seems to be pre pretty common these days. There's more and more manufacturers put in this flashlight function, which uh, I could imagine can be handy if you're just out uh, and about camping or something like this. Uh, guys, uh, without further ado, uh, you, as you can see right now, I'm in the introductory part. Next up, we're going to do the unboxing. And then in part three, we're going to do the range test. And part four is going to be the summary. You can use the navigation below the video. There are these time marks and you click on these time marks and you can jump right ahead to the summary and conclusion or the range test or wherever you want to go. You see always exactly in the navigation. Uh, guys, like I said, this is PMR446. If you're in the States, you might want to look for GMRS or FS, FMRS instead because this is uh, on a slightly different frequency. So you wouldn't use the PMR446 if you're in the States, for example. So guys, without so further ado, let's uh, have a closer look at what's inside the package. And I'm gonna show you a few close-up shots of the build quality in the unboxing. Guys, awesome you're here, let's get started. Now guys, then let's have a closer look at the Convox GT60 walkie-talkies. Uh, like I said, very small, tiny package. So usually that's like a thing you want to consider uh, if you want to use uh, the radios on a regular basis. And usually the small packages are not ideal, but for the occasional user, this makes more sense. I'm gonna explain this to you uh, more in just a second here are the belt, the belt clips. Let's take out those real quick. And then you have, we have radio one and radio two. And yeah, it's a very basic plain radio. And the benefit of a small radio package like this without a lot of accessories is obviously the price. Um, I, in the past, have tested like with considerably more expensive radios from Motorola and other brands. And usually, if you pay more, you get uh, radios that have A, a docking station and B, uh, charging ports. So you can easily see, let's say you plan to use this on a daily basis, maybe on a construction site or a campsite or something like this. Then at the end of the day, you just put them into the charger the radios charge up overnight and the next morning you are ready to go with a fresh charge and usually can, you can use them uh, throughout the day. With those, obviously there's no docking station, there is no nothing, there are no batteries included. So basically what I'm gonna do for this range test, as you can see, is these radios use the double uh, A, I think that's how you call it, and triple A are the smaller ones. So basically what you would do, you would just, uh, Take a pack of one-time batteries, put them in there, or alternatively, if you want to be kind to the environment, I guess you could use rechargeables, but then for the most part, I think you have to take them out and uh, maybe charge them with an uh, in, uh, appropriate charger. Uh, I, I had a quick peek in the manual, supposedly, if you don't uh, want to use the, the like a charger like that, um, it says it has a charge port here, and if I open this up real quick, you can see basically it has some sort of micro USB and in the manual it actually says that yes, this is a charge uh, jack that supplies five volt, one amps. So I'm not sure whether that would be my preferred way of using these, uh, these radios. Uh, uh, pr uh, personally, I would like to put my uh, nice end loops into a charger like that and that would entail that you always have to take the batteries out. Uh, I think the charger just does a better job. It charges much quicker. Uh, but for testing purposes, I'm just gonna use these one-time batteries. Guys, if you have experience with these radios and rechargeable batteries, uh, charging them over the micro USB over here, uh, please let me know in the comments below how well that works for you. I haven't tested that uh, actually, and what I'm gonna do right now, uh, I'm quickly gonna turn this radio on and maybe show you the menu really quick. And as you can see here, it has like a little bit of a backlight display. And what you can do to change the volume, just push the up or down button. Uh, it has a total of eight volume settings. The standard is six. And then uh, you can confirm that. And if you want to change the channel, just go to menu 
and then you get a total of eight channels. Uh, should be pretty straightforward, a very basic walkie-talkie. So guys, uh, so far, so good. Let's just quickly put the cover back on and maybe attach one of those belt clips to see how sturdy that is. And from all I can see, that seems to work pretty well. Uh, for the occasional user, that should be a nice little budget radio. So let's do, let's go outside. I'm gonna do a range test. Let's see what kind of range we get. And let's see what kind of quality of sound the speaker makes and how sensitive this built-in mic right here is. So that we can get an impression of that. And there you see is the flashlight function with the dedicated lamp button. So that seems to work well as well. Oh, you can, oh, it stays on permanently, okay. Ah, guys, I've just figured this out. So you can push it once for flash. If you hold it, it turns on, it stays on, and you can push and hold and it turns off again. So, okay, I didn't know that. So guys, that concludes the unboxing. Now we're gonna jump to part three, the range test. Let's get going, guys. Range test, range test of the Combox uh, PMR radio. Uh, on a very windy day about uh, test point number one with uh, 420 feet of distance. Test point number one, 420 feet. Range test, range test of the Convox PMR radio. This time at test point number two with a distance of 790 feet. Should be still a loud and clear signal. Test point number two with 790 feet. Uh, so guys, range test, range test, uh, test point number three of the Convox PMR radio. Um, we reach now 1,250 feet of distance. Test point number three with 1,250 feet of distance should be still loud and clear. Test point number three. Uh, range check, range check of the Convox PMR. Test point number four, about 1,540 feet. Of distance. Test point number four with 1,540 feet of distance. Test point number four, and it's still very windy. Uh, range test, range test of the Convox radio. This time, test point number five with about 2,000 feet of distance. 2,000 feet of distance with the Convox PMR. Uh, usually, also very good quality. Test point number five with 2,000 feet.
Awesome guys, this concludes the range test. Right now we jumped to the summary and conclusion part. And one thing I noticed about the, the Convox is because it was a pretty windy day, sometimes the wind uh, seems to have hit the microphone and that could be a consideration if you're in an environment where you know for a fact that there is going to be a lot of wind, maybe on a coastline or somewhere in the mountains. If, if you're in an environment where there's a lot of wind, that might be a consideration. Otherwise, the sound quality was pretty good and also range-wise, uh, these Combox uh, radios, PMR radios, performed pretty well. Let's quickly have a look uh, at my range card. And from all I can see, after three quarters of a mile, the, it, it can, uh, I found that the signal quality started to deteriorate somewhat, uh, dip occasionally. But in total, I managed to walk 1.15 miles before my camera started to shut off. So uh, that's pretty okay, considering that these PMR radios are more or less designed for close range communication. That's why they are limited to 0.5 watt output power. And as always, a quick disclaimer, the range can really always be uh, quite significantly affected by your environment conditions in your environment. So right now we have early spring, uh, the trees are not green yet, so I don't have to deal with a lot of obstructions. Uh, the signal doesn't get sucked up by a lot of green trees or a lot of concrete buildings. So the environment for my test is not really that challenging. So please consider that in your case, if you have favorable conditions such as open pastures, you can have an even higher range. Or if you have adverse conditions like lots of concrete buildings, uh, the range could be significantly shorter. So take this test with a grain of salt. Overall, these radios get a thumbs up uh, for beginners. If you're more advanced and you plan to use it on a daily basis, uh, maybe head over to my channel page because there, uh, maybe I can show this to you here, uh, I have lots of other reviews where you can compare different radios, Motorola, uh, Retivis radios, and so on. And I encourage you to uh, check this out. And then, uh, guys, uh, have fun with your new radios, uh, no matter which product you ultimately choose. You have learned something new today. I see you as a subscriber on my channel and in the next video. Awesome, you have tuned in. Uh, take care. And because you just watched the review of the Yellow Comwox uh, GT60 PMR radios, uh, you're also invited to head over to my channel page in the radio section and uh, for example compare them against these uh, black Retivis radios and guys always make sure to uh, get if you're let's say you're in the states to buy the FRS or GMA S versions because radios are always specific to your country guys I'm amazed about how many people have already subscribed to my channel because of the useful content that I provide here you can subscribe right now as well I see you in the next video and uh, maybe even one of my online courses. Take care.